here to talk about uh, one of the gaps that's already been identified, um, which is between primary care and between secondary care. So I'm a practicing GP, and we all know that actually what we can provide as an everyday GP um, and patients that meet the criteria for specialist mental health care, there's a gap in between. There's some patients uh, that we know as GPs and also our patients tell us that actually need more than we can give in our 10-minute GP appointments. But as I say, they don't meet the criteria for secondary care. So Manan's highlighted that problem. Uh, as I say, we've listened to a lot of our patients and carers who've said there's a real problem. They feel discharged from secondary mental health services into nothing. And I think we all experience what I call the washing machine cycle, where those patients then bounce in and out of A&E, bounce in and out of crisis, uh, causing everybody chaos and obviously, most importantly, very difficult for themselves and their families. So we wanted to address that by looking at some service to put in place to meet those needs. And in East London, we've looked at a model where they've got a service in between primary care and between specialist secondary mental health care, um, and they call it an enhanced primary care model. Um, so we've taken a lot of elements, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, and put those together to get some ideas about what that service might look like and what works. And we also have a sequence scheme, which stands for Commissioning for Quality and Innovation. So that's um, some, basically an incentive to look at quality services. And we actually said that one of our sequence schemes this year was around CPFT, our mental health trust, working with us to develop this service. Um, and we've got a consultant, Dr. Nimley, who's been fantastically helpful uh, working with me and with the team, looking at, again, what kind of patients might be suitable. So, what we also didn't want to do is we can't, you know, simply just buy more of the same, keep, you know, salami slicing the service. That isn't going to work. And we all know times for us commissioners are very challenging. Uh, although we've been fortunate this, this year and had a bit more money, um, we can't just, as I say, you know, bolster up the service more and more. We need to look at how we do things differently. Uh, we also know that what we're doing is not good enough because we get feedback, as I say, particularly from, say, that group of patients, uh, that the service isn't good enough. And we need to create capacity in secondary care to make sure that we can focus on those that really have the most complex needs. So there's, a, as I say, a whole group of patients that actually don't need secondary mental health care, but they need more support. Um, they end up in secondary care, which clogs up the system uh, for others that need it more, need the specialist mental health advice. So we needed to do something about that. And the voluntary sector, we recognise, incredibly important. Uh, there's an amazing amount that our voluntary sector do. We are very passionate with our, about our voluntary sector, and they can actually support patients extremely well. It isn't a second quality service. And we wanted to make sure that our voluntary sector integrates much better with our statutory mental health services, specialist mental health services. So Recovery Coaches is another project that we've actually, uh, which links with our, the idea about an enhanced community-based mental health service model. And that's a project whereby it's a model where we have recovery coaches who support patients to access what's available in the community and what's available from the third sector so say mind uh, choices counseling so they actually but they rather than just signposts they support patients with mental health problems to access those services and put in place a menu of interventions that will support that patient and underneath those coaches we we need to have some training that's very important there's peer support workers who are actually sort of lived experience and again will help you know support support patients and carers to access what they need. Um, so we're looking at much more of a community-based model. And enhanced primary care, I mean, the other issue is around, you know, we've said physical and mental health, they don't go independently. We know that our patients with mental health problems do have poor physical health outcomes, and we need to do better there. And certainly in general practice, we know we need to do better there. So the new service, you can see the purple block there, and that's where it sits, as I say, between primary care, what we say is everyday GP business, and between specialist mental health care. So you can see there, and the voluntary sector wraps around that. And we do want the patient to be at the centre of the system. So we want all the services. We go on about this, don't we? We've been, my mother said, oh, I was saying that in the 70s, Emma, and here we go again. But we really have to go some way towards achieving that. So rather than looking at services in silos, looking at the patient at the centre. So what we've done so far is a whole series of engagement work, which really I've said to you in a nutshell is about my colleagues saying, oh, Emma, there isn't enough for patients that are really struggling but don't you know, meet the criteria for secondary care, and patients saying, we feel discharged into nothing, that's why we don't cope and we go into crisis. 
So we've looked at a series of conditions, our team, uh, with the help of Dr. Nimely and with Neil Winston in particular, who've both been fantastic, and come up with some conditions that we feel might be suitable for the service. Um, and that would involve patients sort of being stepped down from secondary care initially, if you like, um, so that there's something for them. As I say, they're not just discharged into nothing. So examples might be people with, say, stable schizophrenia. And again, we would provide much more physical health care for that group because we know we don't do that well. Stable personality disorders is another group of conditions that my colleagues particularly have said, Emma, there needs to be more available for that group of patients. You know, unless they meet the personality disorder criteria for secondary care, there's nothing. So again, that's the other group, particularly we've, we've had feedback, it's important we provide something for. At the, at the end of the day, though, the reality is we can't do everything in one go. We have a very small pot of money. So what we're looking at is we'll, we'll do a sort of phased approach. We'll start off with a small service and evolve it to take on more patients um, into enhanced community-based mental health care. So the type of interventions you can see there would be around physical things like medication management, physical health. So we're thinking that we would have a healthcare assistant, for example, on that team who's specifically focused on the health, the physical health of patients with mental health problems. Um, more proactive reviews, so we're thinking that another team member would need to be somebody with specialist mental health experience like a CPN, quite a senior CPN. And we've talked about the recovery coaches, so we also need a recovery coach on that team to support patients to access what's available in the community. Because again, we can't take more people into the service if people don't flow out the other end. So it is partly about patient flow and creating more capacity. And the overall idea, therefore, that is coming up to us that we've heard everybody say the same thing with all our consultation is about having an extended sort of MDT team. So we have a core team, for example, and as I say, this is all very much ideas still, a healthcare assistant, a CPN and a recovery coach who would be able to link into social care, the GP, um, the IAP service and specialist mental health. And prompt reaccess, you know, we'd need to make sure with that middle service that patients could quickly be seen by secondary care again if they became poorly. So your example is, this, you know, somebody with stable schizophrenia, if they become psychotic and there's issues, we need to know they're seen quickly. And again, the feedback has been that's, that would be really important. But ultimately, clinical responsibility remains with us, with my crew in primary care. So therefore, we wouldn't have all the bureaucracy that when a, when a patient's referred into secondary care, somebody told me it's three hours of paperwork, which frankly is, is ridiculous for some patients. Uh, so we try and avoid that and in that way, as I say, make much more efficient use of the service. And use of the primary care record, again, I'm a big fan of sharing, information sharing, so there'd be one record, the team would use the primary care record, they'd know what's going on, uh, there'd be a single record, and it would avoid, again, this sort of split, constant asking patients for the same information again and the risk of duplication. Um, so that's what it looks like in a rather pretty diagram, and you can see there where the new service would sit. Um, I'm going to stick to my 10 minutes, so I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, this is also our contact number. We work as a team, my team, and we're always very open to questions on anything to do with adult mental health, actually. So please feel free to ask. And if you do want any information, just contact us. Uh, so I'm sorry that was a bit of a run-through, but you've got the idea.